僕の名前はエンポリオです大切にた助けて<笑>助けて神様おおしっこが<笑>血だらけだよ<laughs> Alright, so normally I wouldn't sit down and make this kind of video. This is a little more uh, serious on my end. Um, it's a little more personal. Uh, but first off, hi guys. My name is Kami. Of course, if you're new to the channel,、uh, you know, I upload JoJo videos.、Uh, and that's what this is right here,、uh, obviously. But, anyways, you know, normally I wouldn't get this personal. Uh, over stuff, but I thought it would be something fun to talk about、uh, after getting some suggestions for today's video.、Uh, and my buddy Crimson was like, you know, because、uh, me and him are always talking about Emporio and Hayato、uh, in the Discord chat. We're always talking about these two characters and、uh, their backstories, and I'm, I'm not going to elaborate yet because,、uh, you know, I'm going to explain that shortly. But we're always talking about them, and he was like, you know what? Why don't you do a video talking about them? And Uh, I kind of share a couple similarities with these characters, and you know, I thought this would be a good video to sit down and make. So,、uh, no memes. Well, I'll put one meme right here, I guess.、Uh, so, this whole entire video isn't just one, you know, big clusterfuck of depression.、Uh, so, I'll have one meme go up there, and there it's gone.、Um, but. You know, I'm not gonna roll my intro. I'm not gonna, you know, sit here and make a bunch of jokes and shit. You know, I just wanna make this short, not so sweet, but kind of bittersweet. It's a little bittersweet, okay?、Uh, video. And I guess we'll start with、uh, Emporio. So, you know, Emporio is this、uh, little kid、uh, with a baseball cap and stuff that's inside the、uh, Green Dolphin Street prison. Uh, and Jolene finds him. I think it's in like chapter 11, is when he's、uh, first introduced. And he's kind of just this mysterious little kid.、Uh, just pops out of nowhere, and nobody really knows he's there、uh, except for Weather Report, of course.、Uh, and Anas, we know he's also there.、Um, he has this stand, it's called Burning Down the House. And it's pretty much where he's been living in secrecy.、Uh, he's burning down the house, is this little ghost room. Uh, that's been created off the memories of this、uh, building that burned down. Hence the name Burning Down the House.、Uh, and all the objects inside of that room can be taken out of the room.、Uh, they, when they're in the room, they can't be you know, damaged and stuff like that. Like, it'll just go back to normal. So, like, Emporio's、uh, taken a gun out of the room.、Uh, he's had a computer in there. There's this really big piano, there's a bookshelf, there's like a couch and stuff. It's a, it's a nice little room.、Uh, but he's been living in there in secrecy、uh, the entire time because he actually was、uh, born in the Green Dolphin Street prison、uh, to an unnamed prisoner.、Um, and Poochie's the one that killed his mother.、Uh, and we don't know if it was from her being a stand user and him taking out the stand disc. Uh, hence, you know, making her slowly die out like Jotaro would have if they didn't get his stand disc fast enough. We don't know that. But Emporio's, you know, thrown into the situation with Jolene and everybody else trying to,、uh, try to escape, trying to track down Poochie. And he's kind of just there. And,、uh, you know, when you get to the end of the part six,、uh, you know, manga, when you get towards the end, and they get to the. Uh, Kennedy Space Center, and they start having their fight with Poochie, and all this crazy shit starts happening. The weather report、uh, is already dead by then, but I'm bringing up his name for a,、uh, for a point that's gonna be brought up after.、Uh, it's just kind of cool. It's like a passing down the torch type of thing.、Um, but weather report's already gone. Emporio's with Hermes, Anasui, Jotaro, and Jolene. Because Foo Fighters has been gone. She's been dead for a while now,、uh, which is really sad. I liked Foo Fighters, but I think she died a little too soon. But、uh, that's, a, that's a video for a whole nother. Like, that's, that's, a, that's something for a completely different video that I can make,、uh, which I probably will, talking about different JoJo deaths that I think、uh, you know, could have been avoided or should have happened later on. But that's for another time. But. Emporio is with、uh, you know, the main little group that's still left over
Uh, his weather report is also dead at this time. And uh, Emporio just sits there and he can't do jack shit about what Poochie's doing. And this entire time, he's just watching his friends get killed one by one. The only people he has in his life. Because, uh, you know, he doesn't have his parents. He doesn't have any other family members that are known. He's just this little boy and it's just stuck uh, inside this prison. And he doesn't have anybody else to talk to aside from these people that he met and he's you know been around with them for a while now and he's helped them out as much as he can uh, and he's a really nice guy you know he's a really sweet kid and he sadly couldn't do you know much about what was going on and he just had to sit there and watch everybody die one by one by one by one to you know Poochie uh, with his own goals of you know reaching heaven and we have this first uh universe reset where Poochie states you know you're the only obstacle left in my uh, perfect universe because everybody else had already died and Porio saw Jolene die in front of him Jotaro he saw uh, Nasui die he saw Ermes die everybody dies in front of this little kid keep in mind he's only like 11 so he has to deal with all of these deaths within the span of like five minutes from the moment they got there because everything happens extremely fast because uh, you know Poochie has uh, made in heaven he starts speeding time up uh, so, you know, he's killing everybody off really fast. So they're there and, you know, Poochie tells me he's the only obstacle left that's, uh, that's there to, you know, be in his way. And Emporio gets him into burning down the house. He gets him into a stand room and he tricks Poochie into knocking the weather report disc into him because Jolene had given him, uh, weather reports stand disc. Uh, so he has that and it pushes into him. And you see this really cool panel with Emporio where his eyes like light up and he gets really serious uh, and he has this like really cool stance. I'll put it up uh, on screen now. It's a really cool panel and it's just like, oh, dude, this is so sick. You know, I got so excited when I saw that panel and I was like, this is really fucking cool. Uh, we get to see Emporio fill up the room with oxygen and, uh, you know, paralyze Poochie. Poochie's really upset. He can't do shit. He's starting to die off. And then Emporio, uh, you know, tells him uh, that, you know, he's going to walk down the path of justice and he's going to beat him. And he just, uh, you know, punches the fuck out of Poochie. Like, he's beating the shit out of this guy uh, until he kills him. And then the universe gets reset again. Uh, and this is the big universe reset where we get all the alternate timelines where we get the steel ball run. Uh, you know, universe that comes in and the later follows Jojolion because those are both in the same timeline, just, you know, a bunch of years apart. But Emporio uh, finds himself outside of the Green Dolphin Street prison uh, and he sees an alternate Jolene, an alternate Anasui, and an alternate Hermes. Uh, and he tells the alternate Jolene, which is Irene, uh, he tells her his name. He's like, oh, you know, my name is Emporio. Uh, and he's crying the entire time. He's like, she gives him. Uh, her jacket and stuff and it's like you know raining outside uh, so alternate Anasui I believe his name is uh, Anakis you know he's like oh well if you guys are gonna get in the car get in the car because uh, Hermes got kicked off the bus for trying to get on the bus with a $50 bill um, so uh, Anakis is like you know you can come with us if you just you know pay for gas money with the money you have so that seems reasonable so they all get in, Emporio's, you know, sitting in the back of the car as they drive off, uh, and they start, you know, going down the street, and then uh, Emporio notices uh, an alternate weather reporter standing on the side of the road, uh, you know, he's just, like, hitchhiking, and he's like, wait, stop, you know, pick him up, and uh, Anasui is just like, nah, man, uh, you don't have any more room for any more strangers, I'm not picking anybody else up, and then they kind of just drive off. And that's the end. And then we see the part six cast up in the sky. And we see, uh, you know, the alternate weather port just like standing there and like the car is just driving past them. And that's the end. That's the ending that we get for part six. We don't know uh, anything else that happens to um, Emporio. We don't get to see anything go on with him. That's, that's literally it. It's the most bittersweet ending. And it makes me feel really bad for this kid because he, you know, has to deal with all of this shit. All of his friends dying right in front of him when he has literally nothing else in his life. All of this just happens within a span of maybe like 10 to 15 minutes in those in that last, uh, you know, 
in that last battle of Poochie. And he can't explain anything to anybody. And that's what makes me feel so hurt uh, on the inside. Like, I get, I got really emotional at the end of this. Uh, I, I kind of, like, just sat here and cried. I was like, wow, like, that's some, that's some bad shit. Because, like, I was happy that Emporio was okay. That was, like, the biggest thing. I was like, I don't want anything bad to happen to this kid from the moment I saw him. Because in JoJo, a lot of things go bad. A lot of people die. A lot of people get hurt. A lot of, you know, fucked up shit happens. And I was just like, you know, I hope nothing happens to Emporio. I hope he's okay. And he was okay. He made it out alive. He was all right. He, you know, found uh, the alternate Jolene, who still has the Joestar birthmark. So he knows that the Joestars are still there. And we know that the Joestars are still there, even in that timeline. But he finds her. And, you know, after that, he just goes with them. So we can assume he's okay. Uh, you know, he probably stayed with them. They resumed their lives, you know, but Emporio, even if he wanted to, he couldn't explain the entire situation to any of them. They wouldn't understand what he just went through. Nobody would get it. So he just has to sit there with this, you know, all this shit that just happened to him. Uh, and he really can't explain to anybody because uh, they wouldn't understand all the stuff that happens. You know, they wouldn't get all the Stan stuff. They wouldn't understand who Poochie is. They wouldn't understand because they're different people. They're not Jolene, they're not Anasui, they're not Hermes, they're different people. They would not understand what happened. And he has to sit there and deal with that as he's sitting there in the back of the car, just crying, you know, his eyes out. Because he can't do anything else. He cannot do anything else but cry. This little boy literally has no other options to just sit there and cry. And it fucking hurts. It hurts so bad. And I just, I really wish he had a better ending because, you know, uh, I personally have had people that have just, you know, been really close to me that have died also. I've had people that are, you know, really close to me that have just, uh, you know, stopped talking to me. People that have just left my life. Uh, and that's kind of just, you know, cruel reality of, you know, the world. Just people change. Uh, things change. People come and go. And it's just things we can't deal with. But I just feel bad for this little kid uh, that, you know, he can't do anything about it. And it's not in his power to even try to explain anything because nobody would get him. They think he's crazy. And we also have Hayato, who's also an 11 year old, who's in a similar situation, uh, in a very similar situation to me in some aspects. So he starts to notice, you know, things going on with his dad, well, quote unquote, dad, just Kiryo Shikage, uh, you know, taking Kosaku Kawajiri's life and, you know, living it. And. Uh, you know, Haito starts to get suspicious of this guy. He can't see stands unlike Emporio. Emporio knows what's going on. Uh, Haito has no idea what's going on. He just knows that something is wrong. Uh, you know, all this stuff with Bites of Dust happens. Um, and Haito is thrown into a position with, uh, you know, Josuke and the rest of the gang where he wants to help them uh, find out who Kira is. She eventually does, but he's thrown into this position where he can't do anything for a little bit until he figures something out. Uh, and he sees Brohan die, and he sees the rest of the gang, you know, come up to him, and they're all like, you know, wondering what's gonna go on. And then Kira activates Spice of Dust, and it seems like, uh, you know, Hayato can't do anything until he eventually does uh, get Kira to say that he is, you know, Kira Yoshikage in front of everybody. And then Josuke notices him and they have their fight. But even when they have their fight, at the end, you know, Kira dies, right? He gets hit by the, uh, it's the ambulance or like the fire truck. It's one of those two things. He gets hit by the ambulance and he dies. And then, you know, it goes into him in the ghost alleyway with Raimi and then the ghost hands, you know, drag him into hell or whatever. They just kill him and they take away, you know, Killer Queen. They also like, you know, dismember it into pieces. Uh... And he essentially, you know, just, he goes to hell. But, um, you know, Haito has no idea uh, what stands are. He has no idea of what's going on. He just knows something's going on. And he's surrounded by these people who are, you know, now here. You know, they have Jotaro and Josuke, Okuyasu, Rohan, Koichi. All of them are here. And they're all protecting him. They're all making sure he's okay, you know. And uh, he is okay after. But he has to go home that same day to his mother who's has no idea of anything that happened 
even if he were to try to explain to her that that wasn't dad that was some serial killer uh dressed up as dad she would not she wouldn't get it she'd be so conflicted having gotten closer you know to who she thought was her husband uh because kira kind of fixed things their marriage was like a little weird he kind of came into the house and uh you know fixed things i guess uh between you know co quote unquote kosaku and shinobu and you know he essentially fixes their marriage by making her fall in love with him uh which is kind of cool in a way uh it's not it's not a good thing at all it's like <laughs> that's messed up but um i'm saying it's kind of cool that we get to see this side of kira where you know like i talked about in the uh in the killer queen bites the dust requiem video i talked about how it was cool to see uh or not in that it was in the stray cat uh diamond is unbreakable review we get to see kira worry about shinobu and his family it's not even his family we get to see him you know worry about these people uh and you know try to protect them and that's not a side of kira where you're used to seeing we're used to seeing him uh you know being a crazy fucking hand fetishing you know hand fetished uh serial killer and it's cool to see this side of him protecting them you know even though it's ultimately for him to protect his identity but aito goes home to his mother who says i can't wait for him to get back home tonight and you know she's like sitting there like the dinner table or something i'll pull up the the screenshot and haito is just crying because he doesn't know what the stands are he doesn't know you know what was going on he knew something happened because he was smart and he found out you know oh this guy is kiro shikage he's some bad serial killer he's posing as my dad and then he sees him die even though he knows it's not his dad it's his dad's body and he knows his dad is dead because his dad is not there anymore and you know kiro was his dad for a while and hayato has to deal with this you know he has nobody like he can the, the joe stars obviously know what happened because they were the ones that were there and they were the ones that, you know had to kill him because you know he's a bad serial killer and hayato didn't want him there either you know he didn't want uh kira in his life he didn't want the serial killer to pose as his dad he wanted his dad back even though before that they all didn't talk much and the family relations were really wonky he has to deal with this guy that's not even you know his dad for like such a long time and then that person just dies and he can't explain to his mom that that's not his dad we never find out uh you know what goes on we just know that Hayato can't explain uh to his mom he can't even explain stance because he doesn't know what they are but even if he wanted to he can't explain what happened to his mother uh shinobu and she has to just sit there and wait for you know uh kosaku to come back even though he's never gonna come back and hayato is sitting there crying at the table because he knows he lost his dad for good and his dad is never gonna come back and uh you know funny thing is um well it's not really a funny thing but i it happened a long time ago so you know i kind of just i uh i don't worry about it too much because you know when life goes on i gotta go on as well but uh 11 years ago um i was about i was six and this was about a month after my birthday almost a month it was april 23rd and uh i woke up really early in the morning it was a saturday i believe this was in 2005 um so yeah, i had just turned six and i woke up really early for some reason uh, i normally didn't wake up you know super early on saturdays just like maybe like 5 a.m uh and i woke up really early to go say bye to my dad because he was gonna go to work and uh you know i got to say i love you to him and uh you know my mom was there too she said you know goodbye she was like really like surprised like oh wow like you know you woke up you know normally you don't wake up this early uh but i don't know why i woke up either um i kind of just did and um you know i said i love you to my dad and you know he said i love you back you know he said i'll see you when i come home and um what ended up happening was his because he was a pilot uh 
and his flight school, well, he was becoming a pilot. Uh, he was about to get, you know, his flying license, and he was going to start flying a bunch of big planes and stuff. And it was going to be really cool. Um, but he went to New York to his flight school, and um, a couple uh, things went wrong with the plane, and it was really stormy, and the plane crashed, and my dad died. And, you know, I had no idea of what had happened at first, because uh, my cousin was over uh, with my aunt and my uncle, and, you know, my brother and my sister were home, and my mom was home, we were all just, like, you know, sitting around, and my mom got a phone call, uh, from, you know, flight, from the flight school, telling him that, you know, my dad had died, uh, and I didn't know what was going on, they didn't want to tell me at first, because I was only, I had just turned six, you know, they didn't want me to know right away, uh, they didn't want me to, like, sit there and, like, you know, break down and freak out, uh, and they wanted me to stay calm, um, which they probably should have told me sooner because they did wait a while, but they did eventually tell me, uh, you know, or else I wouldn't know. And I'd probably still be wondering, you know, where my dad is, although I doubt they would keep that a secret for me for like, you know, my entire life. They're not going to tell me, oh yeah, you know, he's dead, no. Um, so I was just with my cousin just playing, we were playing like a Dragon Ball Z game uh, on a PS2. I can't remember which one it was, it was probably like Budokai 3 or something. We were just, you know, playing in my brother's room. Uh, it was just me and my cousin, my brother, and, you know, they just kept me in there the entire time, even though I could hear, you know, uh, my mom, like, freaking out in the other room, like, crying and stuff, like, my sister and, uh, my aunt, my uncle was just there, uh, you know, trying to be supportive of everybody, which, you know, I really do appreciate, uh, my uncle, I'm talking about my Uncle Joe, he's a great guy, I love him so much, but, uh, you know, I really appreciate him always being here, you know, to support the family, and he was always being, uh, you know, He's just always been supporting. He's always been, like, the helping hand when he can be. And, you know, I really do appreciate him for it. I really do. And, you know, it just means so much to uh, have him around and have had him around there uh, at the time. Because, uh, you know, they couldn't explain to me, you know, what had happened. I would have probably, you know, I was only, I had only turned six, like, not even a month uh, before that. Because my birthday is March 30th. This was April 23rd. So I wouldn't get a lot of what had happened. I would have been, like, you know, really confused. They wouldn't really be able to explain stuff to me. It just would have been, like, a big mess. And, you know, uh, I was waiting for him to come back home the entire day. And I continued to wait because they told me that he was just uh, on a business trip and that he wouldn't be back for a while. And then, like, a week after that, they, you know, came and told me, you know, he's dead. And I had to just, you know, live with that and deal with that. And, you know, I haven't had, I don't have like a stepdad or anybody. It's just been, uh, you know, me and my mom at the house. And I don't have anybody else there. But, you know, uh, I've just, I had to sit here and wait for somebody that would never come back home. And, uh, you know, but I guess it's made me the person that I am today, um, you know, of course, everybody wishes they could go back and change things. Uh, you know, if I could have somehow convinced him to stay home that day, I definitely would have done it. But, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. Life goes on. Things happen that we're not in control of. So I can't get upset at myself for these things because uh, I don't have power over them. It was my decision for him to, you know, go out. Because if he would have stayed home, uh, he had already canceled that flight before. Uh but it was between him and his student. But, uh, you know, there's a malfunction in the plane and shitty weather and stuff. Uh, and, you know, the plane crashed. You know, couldn't do anything about that. If he would have uh, canceled that flight again, then he would have lost his job. He didn't want to lose the job. Uh, given he would have found something else to do. Because my dad was a really smart guy. He was a really hardworking guy. Um, he, you know, did a lot of work around the house. He could build houses. He could... Uh, fix plumbing, fix lectures. He was a really smart guy. He was, you know, really good with all of this, like, handiwork and stuff. Uh, and he could have probably found something else, but, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it was, it was his time to go. Uh, and I definitely wish I could have had him longer, of course. Would have been nice. Um, but, you know, uh, we don't all get to have these luxuries of having these, you know, these things. But, uh, you know, that's why I said I can relate to Hayato. We both kind of just sat here uh, 
without being able to really handle the situation, couldn't do anything but cry and just sit there and, you know, it's uh, it's sad, but it's life. Uh, and that's one of the things I really like about JoJo, uh, even though it's all, you know, crazy and wacky with stands and all this crazy shit that goes on. It's a bizarre adventure. You know, it's so real. Um, and it really, it really hit hard, like, at home with, you know, these characters for me, seeing them have to suffer like this. You know, I could, I could relate, you know, uh, Emporio not having people around him, uh, you know, anymore. And these things, they're very sad. Uh, but you know what I want to say with all of this guys of course if you can always help out somebody uh, You know always help. It's always good to support people that you can support uh, You know always try to be there for your friends. You never know what they're going through uh, You know don't question a lot of things just you know just being there for somebody can really help uh, and you know be supportive and appreciative of what you have Because uh, you know most of the time we take a lot of things for granted uh, and, you know, I think it's important for everybody to remember uh, that we should, you know, be grateful for what we have and to, you know, not just be like some greedy, stingy little fucker, you know, <laughs> and be like, be a good person, be a good person. So thank you guys for watching the video, of course. Um, you know, I just want to share a couple personal things uh, that correlated back to JoJo uh, while talking about these characters because I really do feel bad for them. And I really do wish it would have had a better ending, but it's life. It goes on. Things happen, you know, fiction or nonfiction, you know, these things do happen. Uh, and it's just things that people have to deal with. And, you know, you got to learn from it. You got to better yourself and move on. And, you know, all we can really do is just improve because sitting back and thinking about these things all the time, you know, uh, of course, it'll happen on occasion. Sometimes you might be a little down. Sometimes you might go back and remember something that might have happened. It might have not been the best. But of course, um, you know, it's always better and it's healthy for you to just move on and to try. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Be grateful for what you guys have. Uh, like always, you know, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. I promise not all of these videos are going to be like super depressing like this one. Uh, it's probably the only time I'm ever going to do something like this. Uh, maybe later down the road, I might do something else similar to this, but... For now, this is, you know, the only thing I have planned to be like this. I didn't want to put in any Eyes of Heaven gameplay because uh, I just wanted to have the video, you know, be focused on this. I didn't want to have anything else distracting it. Uh, you know, maybe if Emporio was playable with a weather report in Eyes of Heaven, then I would have had something like that. But, you know, he's not. Uh, so, yeah, that's just not there for, you know, not distracting you guys from the main topic of the video. This is something I kind of just want you to sit back and, you know, listen to. Of course. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Like I said before, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I upload Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Kami-sama.